Thanks, Dee. You know, in many places in Europe, jazz is well-loved, but perhaps nowhere more than Paris. U.S. jazz players like Dexter Gordon, Art Taylor, Donald Byrd, and countless others moved there in the 50s and 60s, but Paris had a jazz scene before those giants arrived, and it had its own sound. Much of it created by guitarist Django Reinhardt and violinist Stefan Grappelli and their quintet of the Hot Club of France. In the late 30s, that group merged the gypsy music of Reinhardt's youth with that of Charlie Parker, Duke Ellington, and Louis Armstrong. The Hot Club of France's driving swing lives on today with a group of musicians not from the City of Lights, but from the Motor City, where the Hot Club of Detroit is based. We are joined today by the members of the Hot Club of Detroit here in our Key Bank studio. And by the way, you can see this performance live right now if you check out our webcam at wcpn.org. Guitarist Evan Perry is the Hot Club's leader. Guys, thanks for coming. Thanks for having us, Dan. Evan, now anybody who's watching on the webcam can see that you guys are all young men. So <laughs> how come you guys aren't out playing rock and roll? How did you get into this very traditional style of jazz? I actually did have a number of years of rock and roll under my belt, you know. But, uh, you know, as time goes on, I guess you just it's always searching for something as a musician and an artist and just happened to end up on Django. You know, it's interesting with Django Reinhardt, there are certain musicians that develop like an almost a cult that, that they are, their people just love their work. And Reinhardt is one of those guys. There's Django Reinhardt festivals. I know you play them. What is it? What is the appeal there? You know, it's it's kind of it's kind of hard to describe. You know, gypsy jazz is very much so a cult. And a lot of the groups that play this music are very cult based and they stick together kind of like a cult. Um, I think it more so in the jazz community, the straight ahead jazz community, you get you get a lot of situations where you'll have maybe like a, a leader or a soloist who's backed by a particular group. Um, and it, sometimes it's not as collected as you would like it to be. And what I find within Gypsy Jazz is is that collectiveness. People are sticking together a little more. It's not just a leader. It's a, everybody involved in this sound that, that we call today Gypsy Jazz. Now, I have to ask you, I thought your father uh, told you not to play the guitar, that you wouldn't work. That, that's right, he did. <laughs> what was that story? <laughs> well, my father has been a, a, a pro professional jazz musician his, his whole life since I grew up, uh, which is where I heard uh, a lot of the jazz that I know now today. Um, but, you know, it's, it's tough being a musician, and, and it was tough working in Detroit for a lot of years. And uh, I always had an interest in the guitar, and he said, don't play the guitar, play the bass, you'll always have a gig, nah. you know, because there's a lot of guitar players and, uh, and not enough bass players. So I played the bass. I played the bass for probably eight, nine years. I played uh, upright in the orchestra. And then, of course, you get your teen years and you start rocking out and, uh, you know, skateboard, skateboarding girls and bass. You know, that was my life when I was 13. <laughs> but um, um, eventually I just, you know, so much noodling around the house just – really sparked my interest in the guitar, and I began playing when I was about 18 years old. Now, it's interesting. Django Reinhardt created this very difficult style to master, and he did it. And I know a lot of our listeners have heard his music, but a lot of people don't realize he did it with a disabled hand. Yes. Which I'm sure you think to yourself, I'm doing this with two great hands. Uh, <laughs> well, I got all my fingers, so yeah. why not use them? What, what is the story? Because a lot of people don't know that about Django. Well, the story goes, uh, Django's wife had made him some flowers out of some type of paper material. And uh, in, the, in their gypsy caravan, they caught fire, and they were both trapped in the fire. Django saved, I think, his, his wife and a couple of his cats before burning, you know, like half of his body, pretty much. What happened was his left hand was fused together. His pinky and his ring finger were attached to one another, and, you know, they didn't have very advanced medical procedures back then for things like that, so uh, they cut his fingers back apart so he could have the use of his pinky and third finger, but it didn't really work out as planned. Um, and ended up, he had to develop this whole style of playing with his thumb and his first finger and his second finger. It really did make the big difference. I mean, that gives it a different style than any other kind of guitar player. It did, and it really pioneered a lot of guitar playing, too, because up until that point, you didn't see as much, as much as symmetrical playing on the guitar, where you went from one end to the other rather than across the neck of the guitar. And he created a lot of a lot of, I guess you could say, patterns for, for scales and arpeggios and things like that that uh, fit his handicap, but really, in, at the same time, revolution, revolutionized how people played the guitar. We're joined today on Around Noon by the Hot Club of Detroit. They're playing at Nighttown tonight, 8 o'clock. We're talking with the leader of the band, Evan Perry, here on Around Noon on 90.3. We're going to ask you guys to play in a minute, but certainly those comparisons between the Hot Club 
of France, the Quintet of the Hot Club of France and the Hot Club of Detroit are going to happen. You wouldn't shy away from those because at your core is gypsy jazz, but there are things that make your band different. And one of them is the difference in instrumentation. What did what did Django's band use and what do you traditionally use? Well, Django's band started off with three guitars, a bass, and a violinist. And that's the traditional uh, instrumentation for a, a hot club style group. Um, but, you know, as Django got older, he didn't always use that instrumentation. He ditched the rhythm guitar and played with drums sometimes and uh, added clarinet instead of the violin at times. Um, piano was in there as well. And I'd like to think that if Django was still alive today, he wouldn't be playing in that same instrumentation he had all these years. And, and at the same time, what's inspiring to me about that is that there's no reason I have to use that particular instrumentation for playing this music, you know. Well, what I hear in my head and what I envision as, as a hot club ensemble is, is pretty much what I have here. And uh, I think that's acceptable. Absolutely. Tell us what you, who you have here, and then we'll let you play. Well, we have on saxophone uh, from Detroit, Carl Cafagna. And hailing from Marseille, France, on accordion, we have Julian Labreau. On bass from Fort Wayne, Indiana, but currently residing in Ann Arbor, Michigan, we have Andrew Kratzit. And uh, I'm from Detroit as well. And our very special friend and guest today on guitar is Mr. Frank Vignola. Terrific. Gentlemen, what, what is the Hot Club of Detroit going to play for us? We are going to play an old standard called Coquette. This is the Hot Club of Detroit on 90.3's Around Noon.
Coquette, played by the Hot Club of Detroit here in our Key Bank studio as we bring you this edition of Around Noon on 90.3. By the way, if you're close to your computer, you can see this performance live. It's on the web at wcpn.org. I'm ID Stream Stan Paletta. The band we're hearing tonight is going to play at Night Town this evening at 8. Their new recording is called Night Town 2. We're talking with Evan Perry, the leader of the band. What you were talking about a little earlier is exactly what I was thinking about as I heard that. And I heard you guys about a year and a half ago when you were in town with James Carter. Mm -hmm. And I was talking to a a musician who was in the audience who's a great player, but he's into much more experimental styles. And he's like, I don't get this. I'm not feeling this. What are these guys trying to do? And I said, to me, what it's about is part of it's about we're going to try to swing as hard as we can. Like, you know, they talk about lift the bandstand kind of thing. Yeah. And it's like, that's a good virtue in and of itself, isn't it? I mean, that's the idea. Definitely. I guess I guess the goal of music is really to dance to, you know, or to be able to at least, especially swing music, you know, if you can't tap your foot to it or right. get a groove going, then you just, something's kind of, something's wrong maybe. <laughs> well, it, some, it just, you know, made me think, exactly. It made me think of like the Basie band in the late 30s. I mean, the thing was about getting the groove going. Yeah, yeah, exactly. It's all about the groove. So your new re- record is Night Town. And he, yes. Are we connecting that back to the great club here in yeah, Northeast Ohio? Yeah, it's got some connections to the club, and this, this is going to be our, our maybe our fourth or fifth time back in Night Town, and, and we're really happy to be part of that community there. And uh, Jim Wadsworth over at Night Town has, has been really supportive of over the years, so we're really happy to have so many friends down here in Cleveland. Well, when I attended, there weren't many empty seats, and from what Jim tells us, there doesn't appear to be many empty seats tonight. And I think in part the appeal is this is fun, enjoyable music. You can just come out and hang out and listen to it. It's great. You know, it, it, across the board, you know, I, I get guys who are like seven-string shredder metal dudes, you know, who – who hear this stuff and are like, man, I love it, you know, but they would, they would never give credit to any other jazz, you know, but for some reason they all like this music, you know, from all different backgrounds. It's pretty cool. Did you approach this new recording night town differently than your first one? Did you try anything different with this one? Uh, we, we, yeah, we, we approached, uh, in terms of, uh, in terms of song choice and arrangement and, uh, the instrumentation is different. We had added saxophone, um, our first album has clarinet, and our second has sax, and we're pretty set in our ways with this with this instrumentation now. Um, but it's, I guess you could say, it's a tighter, more refined, a little bit more experimental album. We chose some not so uh, popular songs in this style, like you wouldn't see too many gypsy jazz groups play Seven Steps to Heaven, Miles Davis, or something like that. So we touched on a little bit of that in, in, uh, in this latest recording. That was part of what I enjoyed about it, because especially when you're in a traditional band, you can get locked into the traditional repertoire. So you play Honeysuckle Rose, you play Djangoology. Yeah. You know, and there's a reason guys play those songs over and over, because they're really good. But applying this to, you know, to something like Seven Steps, you guys do Gene Ammon's Blues Up and Down. Yeah. And uh, it gives it a different feel. The other thing I noticed is that you don't always play in this kind of style, like there's like a tune that almost has a boogaloo feel on it. It's Django's Monkey, I think. That's right, yeah. 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 <laughs> um, you know, we, jazz is always about, I guess, to me, taking from the past and connecting it to the present. And and there's no reason why why people shouldn't be able to do that. I've always been a, a big fan of boogaloo New Orleans kind of grooves, so we thought, why not, you know? And... Um, yeah, I just, does that answer that? I don't know. It certainly does. <laughs> <laughs> We'd like to let you guys play a little bit more. We're listening to uh, the Hot Club of Detroit. They're going to be playing at Night Town this evening at 8, and they're playing for us live here in the Key Bank studio on 90.3 WCPN during around noon. Evan, what will we hear next? Next, we're going to play one of Django Reinhardt's, one of his most famous compositions. This is a song called Nuage, and we're going to have our friend Frank set us up here, and we're going to put a little Latin twist on Nuage. Let's listen to the Hot Club of Detroit on 90.3's Around Noon. Thank you. 
Uh, that was beautiful. That's the Hot Club of Detroit playing for us live in our Key Bank studio here on 90.3 as we bring you around noon. I'm Idea Streams, Dan Paletta. Uh, Evan, you brought a special guest with you. As you mentioned Frank Vignola. Frank, I just have to quickly ask you two quick questions. When did you catch the Django bug? How long ago? Uh, let's see, 37 uh, years ago, I caught the Django bug at the age of six. No kidding. My father is a uh, banjo player, and he always had uh, classic guitar recordings like Django and Les Paul and Bucky Pizzarelli. So I grew up with that music. And then, same story, teens, you rock and roll out and get into this crazy business and travel around the planet and get to play with great guys like this. It's Not really a lot of fun to be together here. I don't think anybody would believe me when I said this is the first time you guys have played together. Isn't that right? That is correct, yes. And did you meet at a festival or...? No, I met uh, these guys about four years ago, I guess, in Ann Arbor, and we were playing on the same bill together. They didn't invite me to sit in then. I didn't think I had. <laughs> They're making up it for it today. My, uh, <laughs> <laughs> so, and uh, I actually, my wife's family is from Detroit, so whenever I go there, I, uh, you know, kind of hear about you guys, read about you playing in there, and it's uh, it's a lot of fun to get together. They asked me to come out and be part of this. And that's going to make a great yeah. addition to the band. You guys are playing tonight, 8 o'clock at Night Town. Evan Perry and gentlemen from the Hot Club of Detroit, thanks so much for joining us this afternoon for Around Noon, and we hope you'll play one more piece for us. Yes, we would love to. We're going to not play Django's Monkey. We're going to play Django's Tiger. All right. This is the Hot Club of Detroit on Around Noon on 90.3. <laughs>
the Hot Club of Detroit. You're on 90.3 WCPN Idea Stream. We're on the web. Our webcast continues for just a couple more minutes. So if you're joining us at WCPN.org, that was terrific. That was Django's Tiger. Don't you wish you had the rights to a tiger rag? Somebody who has those is making a lot of <laughs> yeah, money. Yeah, making a lot of money. <laughs> that's a, that's a <laughs> famous... Yeah. yeah, really. Oh, is it public domain? Uh, that is a tune that so many pieces have been written around. Is that your uh, composition yourself? Uh... Was that composition? I mean, did you, you you obviously based it on Tiger Rag, but did you write it or? No, that's actually Django. Oh, it's actually right Django too, and I have to say I'm not familiar with that. You know, on our album we have Django's Monkey, and it's it's basically Django's Tiger with the New Orleans Boogaloo Groove. And that's how it. that one works. That's okay. How it works. Now, from here, you play tonight at Night Town, and then where are you off to tomorrow? And tomorrow, uh, we will be back in Detroit uh, once a year. We have a Django Reinhardt Festival in Detroit uh, that I started six. This will be our sixth year. And uh, it's not a huge festival. It's more of a grassroots, homegrown kind of thing. And just paying homage to Django and the music. And uh, we've started this kind of kind of craze around Detroit where people love to come, love this music. And we're one of the few bands around that do it. So this gives them everyone an opportunity once a year to collectively get together and enjoy all this good music. And we love to bring special guests to our festivals every year. And... And we're very lucky to have Frank with us this year, and we're really looking forward to having some fun in Detroit tomorrow. You mentioned that, uh, you know, when you play sometimes that, you know, guys who are like into thrash metal or whatever will really be into what you're doing. What's it like when you're on the bill with, like you're playing at a festival that has a lot of different styles? I mean, there should be some hard boppers or, you know, cats who play more out stuff, and then you guys play. What's the audience reaction like? Are they always surprised? Or It's great. You know, we play at the Detroit International Jazz Festival every year, and uh you know, it's kind of breaks up the monotony, I guess, sometimes, having our group in the mix. Um, um, you know, I'm not saying that a lot of bands sound the same or anything, but, but you know, you hear a lot of horns and a lot of drums and things like that, and then it kind of, you know, take a, you know, a breath of fresh air and come check out some gypsy jazz and kind of helps the Helps you enjoy your day, I guess. Does, it does break like things that. up a bit. We'll ask you guys if you'd be so kind just to play a few more minutes, play one more tune for the folks who are still watching us on the web here at WCPN.org. Yeah, we're going to have a little jam here on another Django composition called Minor Swing.
the Hot Club of Detroit here at WCPN.org. You can hear the Hot Club of Detroit at Nighttown tonight, 8 o'clock in Cleveland Heights. The name of their new recording is Nighttown as well. Guys, thanks so much for coming and for sticking around. We appreciate it. Thanks so much. Thank you for having us.